Welcome. I'm Halcyon, and this is the Belief Buffet. This is the weekly opportunity for me to share what is going on in my heart and mind. Today, I want to share some ideas that came up in recent live broadcasts where after we discussed it, people go, oh, make a video about this. Someone asked me, how do you get over procrastination? Any tips? And I said, well, can we, can we talk about this tomorrow? Maybe the day after that? I think the most significant aspect of dealing with procrastination is in figuring out a shift in your mindset. I like to think about being in partnership within my own existence. I have multiple versions of myself that are always vying for control and attention. Usually the one that is in control and the loudest one and the one with the that's hands firmly on the wheel is now me. Now me is the one that likes ice cream and maybe one more bite and maybe stay up a little bit later and maybe the one that says, I don't want to do that now and procrastinates. But I also have my higher self me. And higher self me is the one that can put together a list of things that needs to happen, can put together a plan, can put together a morning routine, who can see what would be best for me. And so the key is to try to develop a relationship with those two entities and allow them to gift to one another. How can now me love higher self future me so much that he wants to give him gifts? So that he says, you know what, I'm going to go to bed because future self me is going to be so appreciative. Or I'm going to not eat this because future self me likes the way he feels when he is feeling healthier. And so even though now me would feel awesome, with a mouthful of ice cream. I'm gonna gift future me that. Or I'm gonna gift future me the absence of anxiety and stress when future comes and this task is not done. So I'm gonna gift future me peace of mind and I'm going to do this task right now. A few little tips around that to help you. One is just get in the, in the headspace of never touching a piece of paper more than once and take that to the digital realm. I mean, most of my to-do list things are not on pieces of paper or mail, but I like that old school idea of like, if you're going to pick up a bill, don't go, oh, this is a bill and set it down. I'll pay this later. No, if it's in your hand, pay it now. If you're reading an email, respond now. If you are looking at a comment, you know, if it's something that you don't want to do and it's a procrastination, keep in mind that you are actually burdening many versions of future you if you don't do it now. Because let's say you don't do it now. You set aside, I'm going to pay this bill tomorrow. Future you picks up the bill and goes, "Mm, I'm going to pay this tomorrow. So now no progress has happened. However, you have spent energy thinking about it, and actually a little bit of suffering, thinking about this task that you don't want to do. So you now have a net zero, no progress, and yet a negative in use of energy and feelings. So if you can keep remembering that and reminding yourself that, like, oh, if I postpone this, I have now robbed from myself. I have robbed from future me. Another tip that I learned recently is the idea of creating a daily routine for things as opposed to a commitment to like run more. Instead, run every day, run every morning. So I now have a morning routine where I stretch every morning. I do my uh, physical therapy every morning. I do either pull-ups or push-ups every morning. I do sit-ups every morning. I do a cold shower every morning. And now I do a love broadcast every morning at 9 a.m. And The benefit of doing every morning is similar to what I was saying about the negative energy cost of decision making. Like, Like, I don't have to spend any energy deciding if this is going to be one of my days to take a cold shower. I used to do this. I used to say, okay, I'm going to journal five days a week. And then every single morning I have to go, 
should I journal today? I should journal today. If I don't journal today, then I'm going to have to journal on the weekend and yeah, okay. Or now, now I have just spent several seconds, if not more, thinking about this process and there's stress involved. So I have now given myself this burden on a daily basis where if I just go daily, it's, it's without thought. It is simply a commitment. Just simply do it. That can sound daunting, maybe easier said than done, but try to really anchor it into that relationship with future you. Give yourself a gift. It's an opportunity to gift future you. Just do the thing. Just do it. Just do it. And think of you, future you, going like, yeah. And then, you know, as you build momentum, it gets easier and easier. And that's another thing to remember. I think that, that awareness makes it easier as well. You are constantly creating new grooves in your brain patterns. So the first time you do the difficult thing is the most difficult. The second time it's a little easier. The third time it's a little easier. So if you can remember that, then this is another way to gift future you. You can say, I'm going to go through the difficult process now as a gift to make it easier for tomorrow me and even easier for two days from now me and even easier for three days from now me. This is my way to do a kindness to myself. And as you, over time, start to reap the benefits and feel a, a recipient of all of these kind gifts to yourself, it's, it becomes kind of a, uh, the momentum gets going and it feels less of a, of a stretch. It takes more just raw willpower and brute strength to do the thing because you love the relationship that you have with past you and you love the relationship you have with future you. And you have these deep senses of satisfaction that you become aware of that even though they're not as, as high a spike as that mouthful of ice cream, you're aware of the longer term satisfaction that will be there if you bypass that fourth bowl of ice cream. I should say that right now I am in my morning routine and I am being very disciplined in my, in my habits. I'm not procrastinating things, but that's not always the case. And it is important to give yourself some forgiveness, recognize that you get on and off and in and out, but the quicker you can get back in, the quicker you can get to that place where it is, feels easy. You know, the, the, it's, it's that getting the inertia going that is so difficult. And, Try to just make a council of all the versions of you and know that now you is, is in possession of all these fabulous gifts to make your future you so much happier. So on behalf of now me and future me, thank you. I love you. I am so excited to tell you about my new book. Now it's my second book. You might know I wrote a book about 10 years ago called Love More, Fear Less, Float More, Steer Less, a collection of essays. And as my 50th birthday approached, I decided I wanted to make a catalog of my life, inspired by my friend uh, Jennifer, who is helping to uh, design the book with me and edit it with me. I, I wanted to go through the 50 projects I'm most proud of of my first 50 years. And it starts off with a independent yearbook that I did in high school, goes through zines, pre-internet, uh, internet projects, Burning Man projects, some uh, physical painting projects, uh, photography projects, uh, all sorts of stuff, some sex activism. So it's not for uh, those under 18 years old. And I think it gives a beautiful look at what a what my journey has been through life, but also just like what a unorthodox life can look like. You know, when you when you take your hands off the wheel, but keep your foot on the gas, stop steering towards the traditional measures of success. Where will your heart take you? 
and mine's taken me some amazing spaces, some beautiful frontiers. And, and so I put it all into a book to share. Now it is a catalog. It is not a, a narrative book. It is not a traditional memoir. That's probably coming in a year or two. This is a photo book with the descriptions of and photos of each of these projects. And then each one has a QR code so that you can go and visit the materials that go with it, whether that be a video or an early web page or something like that. So, uh, and some of the videos are things that have never been shown before, or at least not without a pay-per-view cost. So it is a, it is a deep dive into a pink and wonderful life. I think you'll get a kick out of it. It has been such a joy to create it and I'm excited to share it with you.